All right, so in this movie, we're going to look at the delay designer and some of the many things you can do with it in a production you wouldn't expect from a typical delay plugin. Let's have a look. I'm going to start by the simplest setup for a delay designer, just a single delay tap. So you can get to this by starting by the default and then shift selecting all the other tabs. One click on one of them, you can choose the lead tab and get rid of all but one here. So first I'm going to bring its level up. And what happens is when I play a key, I'll hear the note I play and then I'll hear it again, which is the delay tap. Again. The second one is the delay. I can change the position of the tap a little later. And here a longer delay tap. I also have a feedback section here. So first I'm going to turn up the feedback. This is the amount of gain loss for each tap. So I can have a little bit more of gain loss, for example, like this. Or a lot of gain loss like this. So that's basically a traditional delay function. I got a delay time on the horizontal axis. And in the upper right, I got a feedback button. We can do it in another way. I can add delay taps here, and I can set the level so that each tap decays over time at whatever level I want, like so. So one more time. So as you can see, it opens up a whole lot of possibilities that you wouldn't have with other delay plugins. Or I can set, for example, the, the tap at random. So that way they're not regularly spaced like this. And I can add some more taps in there if I want to. So that's the basic way delay design works. As you can see, it's way different from other typical delay. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to visit me at youmusicandme.com. See you around.